That reminded me of that fucking shit that you hate. Nah, uh, uh, you didn't give me three dollars. Um, um, um. Ooh, ah. <laughs> Ooh, nap, 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 nap. That's amazing. I hate it because I can't stop watching it though. Because it's weirdly addictive. It's, it's weird. It's like watching like you know like a slot slot machine reel. It's like a train wreck. You're a train wreck. Well, well. Um. So as you've known, I've been stuck at home for a minute. Yes. I've just been. I've watched so many things. Get the microphone closer to you. <coughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't know if you told me about it, but did you watch this movie called Meat Cute? It's got the tall guy from SNL that dates everybody. What's his name? Bill Hader. No, no, no. younger. Andy Samberg. No. He did Kim after Kanye. Pete Davidson. Yeah, Pete Davidson. Oh, with Ke- oh, with uh, Kaylee Kyoko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I started. I need. I want to finish it. No, but it's like it's a it's a time loop one, and she's trying to figure out how to like make the date perfect. Yeah, it's really bizarre. Yeah, no, it looks really bizarre. I, well, like I, I put it on because I thought it was gonna be like rom com y. It is a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Halfway through, I looked at my partner. I was like, "This is kind of like a horror movie." Fuck yeah! Because it's just like how unhinged the whole premise is because she's trying to like groom him into the perfect, the perfect match that's right. using time travel because she's like isn't like uh but it's not like groundhog day where she's like just stuck in this loop she's choosing to keep doing it as oh, opposed to like groundhog day where he's just stuck in this world and it's kind of just doing what he that has adds to- a new level to fucking uh create psycho what is it what like that you keep doing the same thing uh uh do the same thing over and over again. The definition of insanity? Insanity, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, yeah. it's really unhinged, and it's really bizarre. I think you're really going to like it. It's on Peacock, right? Yes. Yeah, I went through just, I but like, yeah, but I watched that because I was on this kind of like rom-com kick. Like, I yeah. watched Wanderlust for the first time. No, I don't know that one. It's a Jennifer Aniston, Paul Rudd rom-com oh, okay. thing. Is and, that the one where Jack Nicholson plays his dad? No. Oh, okay. Who's dad? Paul Rudd's dad. Huh. Yeah, there's a movie that they did together. Paul Rudd it plays Jack Nicholson's son, and they play this... Oh, Jack Nicholson. I heard Jack Black. I was oh, like, no. What? <laughs> no, Jack Nicholson. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, and uh, they're supposed to have, like, a really, like, affectionate family. So, like, they, like, they kiss on the lips. Uh-huh. So, it's kind of a weird quirk. So, their first day of meeting, Jack Nicholson just looked at Paul Rudd, just, like, grabbed him, kissed him. Now that we got that over with, let's keep going. <laughs> Um, oh, and then I watched. <laughs> oh no, because I had recommendations. Oh, and then I watched Cobweb, which is from the producers of uh, Barbarian. Oh, weird. Okay, and it's this weird, fam, mother, father, son dynamic, and there's something else going on behind the scenes. Also, Incestuous? No, it, uh, it did have a very um, people under the sta- people who live under the stairs okay. kind of vibe to it. Because, you know, the house is like, you know, it's like the mom's locking all the doors and it's like that. But then it has the weird ending that only the barbarian producers would do. Something's fucking so, out of left Yeah, field. you're like, yeah. okay, yeah, <laughs> sure. Right. But yeah. So right. yeah, check those out. All right. Yeah. Cobweb. Cobweb's being... For you. This is Tommy. This is Jacob. This is Tommy, Tommy and Jacob's, Jacob's mixtape. Mixtape. I thought that's what you meant. Yeah, it was. But you just had such little energy okay. to it. Okay. <laughs> Get over here! Uh, we're hey, not, everybody! We're not, we're not doing any of those. Nope, not at all. <laughs> to avoid uh, confusion. Oh uh, no, we are. Uh, I mean, continuing on with martial arts, which I I never really. I don't think we totally nailed it. Yeah, and I I was kind of I felt that way when it was when you suggested it too, but I was like, okay, let's do it. Well, I mean. You know. Still a good watch, but it didn't really. Meh, yeah. You didn't like it, I take it. No, I mean, something was fine. It was just kind of like, okay. I'm like, sure. Like, I, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. I was like, yeah. Anyways, we were doing uh, 2005's Unleashed. Unleashed. 
apparently its original name was Danny the Dog, which is a much better fucking name in my opinion. Danny the Dog, if it was funnier, like in a dark, like a dark comedy, you know what I mean? No, then it would be Daniel the Dog. <laughs> or Dan- Daniel Dog, that's the name, Daniel Dog. What is that from? I don't know. So this movie was released in France on February 2nd, and then the U.S. May 13th of 2005. January 10th. Okay, I read the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's premiere January 10th. Uh, um, but yeah, it was originally released in French. French. Frank, why am I saying it's so weird? You don't who, is, where is, where, who is this? What's his voice? I'm in a weird mood today. Anyways. Um, yeah, Unleashed came out in France first, uh, January 10th, uh, 2005. And then, yeah, uh, had its United States release um, May 13th. And that's because uh, it's you know, Lynch, uh, Lynch, French um, producers and writers and directors and whatnot. Um, so I was actually I actually looked at the uh, box office for this one because I was curious if like the worldwide would have been a lot more than the domestic mm-hmm. and it was just like right the same pretty right. much it was like one oh two domestic and then ninety six worldwide I was like yeah okay well that makes sense because this movie was just kind of like mid tier mm-hmm. mid tier box office mid tier mid tier movie mid tier so if you don't know. Uh, the movie synopsis. <laughs> Am I making you uncomfortable? A little bit. <laughs> um, synopsis. A man conditioned as a vicious bodyguard to a uh, vile loan shark fights against his training. Yeah. Which, honestly, like, everything about this movie, like, premise-wise and so forth, like, I would, I don't know. I, I just feel like this, like, everything just went, it's like, yeah. It's just like, there's, yeah. Ah, it's, it's I mean, just a quick note. I'm it. trying not to say too much until I get to okay, kind of like well review then. stuff. So okay. that's why I mean I think I'm kind of cutting myself short on a lot of what I'm saying. Um, well, really quick for 2005, how many movies? A lot. 76. Nice. I had 46. I was like, damn. There's definitely a, there was a lot on there. I was like, I it's like oh I've been meaning to watch that. I was like oh I I've like familiar but never watched. Well, it's like there's a lot of stuff that I remember I had. It's that didn't see that year, but it's just yeah, like, of course. over the yeah. years, you know. Well, I mean, so 2005 is the year I graduated high school. So, like, there's like it's, it's interesting to kind of see what I remember, which movies I saw in the theaters, and like what kind of person I was then, you know. Well, we also did a couple, we, were, we did a couple from 2005. We have done a couple, like yeah. Cursed, um, The Longest Yard. Hmm. Is that on there? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I counted that one. I don't just don't remember seeing it. Oh yeah, um, well, 2005 was just a. I mean, it just that's like it's a it's a common ground year for you and I as like mm-hmm. you were starting teenager and I was ending teenager. You know, mm-hmm. there's also like ones that I remember like Sideways. I don't know. I remember watching that. Don't know why. Saw that in theaters. Don't know why I watched that. I liked it. I wanted. I to like see it. it. I mean, like yeah. as an adult. But yeah. I'm like, when did I decide to watch that movie? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. You probably didn't see it in theaters like that. Yeah. I would that'd be weird. Unless, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so let's go into director. <clears throat> going into director. Um, can you pronounce his last name? Le Terrier. Le Terrier. Louis Le Terrier. Louis Le Terrier. Le... Is that right? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know French, man. <laughs> I got the Eastern languages. Come on, you're supposed to get the Western languages. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, Louis. We're just gonna say Louis Leterrier. Yeah, I mean it makes. I mean that, that looks right. That sounds right. Um, but he uh only had like a fifteen directing credits. Um, this was some one of his earlier ones. But his first one that he directed was uh the Transporter. Yeah, which we talked about a long time ago. Well, because we talked about Luke Beck. Luke. Right, 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 right. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, and he also then directed. Uh, so it's actually interesting is that. For some strange reason, he's not officially credited um, as the director of the transporter. Um, he was like credited as like action choreographer or something strange, something different. Um, but Luke Besson like was like, no, he's he directed the film, and so then Luke Besson also then gave him like the opportunity to direct Transporter Two. I mean, essentially, just uh, Louis became like part of like Besson's like crew of people that he likes to that he likes to, that he likes for them to direct his movies type thing. Yeah, and kind of like a kind of action guy like the incredible yeah. hulk clash mm-hmm. of titans now you see me which i was like okay that's interesting 
And then uh, the style turn. of like cinematography and like move the sw- the sw- the swishy move zoom blah blah blah. Um, in this, I was like, I see that. That's all. Of, that's like all of now you see me. Yeah. It's like that entire movie is like all on it, like the cameras, but it's I, God, I it's really like on a drone. I do not like those movies. Really? I think they're so bad. I think they're so fun. <laughs> they're just hot garbage. I don't think they're good. I yeah, think that's fun. fair. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's I think fair. Fun. That's fine. Yeah, there's a difference between finding something fun and just and and just and and, and you know knowing that it's you know bad. You know what I mean? The Phantom. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You know we like bad cinema sometimes. It's just sometimes I like. For me, like sometimes a bad cinema that someone might just find fun, I just like I'm like I can't, I can't get behind. Like I'm just bored. But yeah, this was written by Luke Besson. Yeah, Luke Besson, which we did uh, <laughs> for, for my birthday a couple years ago. Yeah, Fifth for Element. Fifth Element. Um, uh, it's interesting. Is like, okay, so going into this movie, I didn't know that this was Luke Besson. I didn't either, and. I finished it. Well, I saw that Luke Besson was like a producer on it, but I somehow missed written Writing, by yeah. in the in the opening credits. Like, so when I saw a producer, I was like, "Oh, that's interesting, huh?" And then like it ended and whatnot, and I was like, "Well, that was weird. Whatever, okay." And then I saw that after then doing my research, it was like written by Luke Besson. I was like, "This movie makes so much more sense now because <laughs> it's literally that's this is like literally all he fucking knows how to write is except for Fifth Element. Like the Fifth Element is like." Hit, like I feel like that's the peak of of Luke Besson, best, and he's just he's and then he just kind of went back and recycling almost the same idea of Leon the Professional, FM Nikita, and just like I've never seen those, so I don't have down. No. Yeah, it's they're kind of. I mean, I like the family a lot. That's a good. one. I haven't seen that one. That one's funny. That's Robert De Niro, Michelle Pfeiffer, yeah, mob yeah. family. And hiding in France. Uh, what do I mean, you think it? <laughs> the transporter is fun. I mean, he wrote that as well. I don't really. I remember liking him as a kid. I don't remember what the whole fucking deal is with those movies. The he, transporter movies. He literally gets a he gets a package and he, no questions asked. He delivers it. Yeah, that's like the whole premise of, for Jason. And like State. the first one is like a woman in his trunk or something. Well, he's not supposed to open the trunk. He's not supposed to know what the package is. But he does. And but then... somehow it's it's he doesn't open it on purpose. It just somehow the trunk opens and some type they get of... like into a fender bender or something. Yeah. in the truck. The yeah. Trunk. Pops and then open. it turns into him trying to save the woman. Yeah. Real Jason. It's Dave. Jason Statham. Yeah, real Jason Statham. That guy is the made, real Jason Statham. That, that guy has made a killing of just being Jason. Statham. Yeah, he's like he's like Vin Diesel. I was about to say <laughs> Vin Diesel did the same damn. Arnold Schwarzenegger did the same goddamn thing. Sylvester Stallone did the same goddamn thing. Can I go on one tiny tangent since you brought up Arnold? Just real quick. Sure. I watched. Uh, did you watch that documentary? No. On Netflix? Oh. No, I watched G- Terminator Genesis. Oh, is that the is that the third one or is that the one? I don't fucking know. Who's who are the other actors in it? Uh, Amelia Clark. Okay, so it's the more recent one. That's this one's garbage. It's if you thought that they couldn't make Terminator any more convoluted, you would be very wrong. I was. I mean, granted, uh, the last one I really remember seeing was the Christian Bale one. No. Yeah, yeah, Christian, Salvation. Salvation. Yeah, it was just like four. I think five. I think that's the fourth one. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Um, the only one that's not really dealing with time travel is just the war. Well, yeah, because it's uh, it's them trying to get John Connor sent back in the back to the past. No, they're trying to, they send Kyle to the past. They don't send John Connor. That's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, but yeah, I was just sitting there like, what is happening? But the young Arnold she, CG was all right. Well, okay. It was okay. Fair. But yeah, it didn't I, look as weird as like, you know, sometimes it just looks like, yeah. Um uh 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 what's like, uh, like... the uh, <clears throat> Santa Claus. Um fuck. Tim Allen, oh. evil Santa. That's what they oh, look yeah. like sometimes, you know. But it was like okay, that worked out. Yeah, cuz it was like that was like mid 2010s or early 2010s. Like I think 2014 or something like that. Yeah, it's when she was in the Amelia Clark said the 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 waves of her Game of Thrones fame and whatnot. Yeah. But also just really quick, me thinking that they send John Connor back is really incestuous. Yeah, because Kyle needs to make it with Sarah to make John, you know, that I'm nest. my own grandpa. <laughs> that old nest egg. No, I just, I just <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. It's so convoluted. I can't. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So that was Luke Besson. Yeah. Um, 
the tangents we go on. Um, uh, also, I looked up who did the choreography for this as well. Oh, yeah. I looked up the name, and then I never actually looked up the person. It's uh, the same person that did Kung Fu Hustle. Yes. Uh, that's why it was like that name sounds familiar. Yuen, Wing, uh, Yuen Wu Ping. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, the dude can choreograph some fighting. Yeah. So I was looking at his stuff on, on his Wikipedia just to get a little bit more. Like He won an award for Kung Fu Hustle. He won an award for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Um, I think he also he has four awards. Let me, let me say. Um, and it's Hong Kong Film Awards, specifically. Um, uh, Once Upon a Time in China 2, which is 1993, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, 2001, Kung Fu Hustle, 2005, and 2007, Fearless. I think that's also Jet Li. Yep. Yeah, that's also, yeah. Do you think there's this weird kind of like thing where these martial artists, especially like these movie martial artists, the ones that, you know, you see on screen become famous and everything, that they want to fight each other in like a, like, challenge Welcome to the tournament. Yeah, like, like all action stars, martial artists. I like sitting there, like Jet Li sitting there watching like a Jackie Chan movie and he's like, I want to fight him. You know they're in a movie together, right? Yeah. yeah. The Forbidden King, Kingdom. Yeah, Forbidden Kingdom. Which I didn't know that's actually kind of like uh, uh, another retelling of like Journey to the West. Yeah, that's what I remembered. Like demons and... Mm-hmm. Which yeah. actually makes me kind of interested. Yeah, Story of the Monkey King. But do you think they do? Do you ever think they look at each other and they're like, I want to fight him. Like just for like... Not, not the one, you know, but... <laughs> There can only be one. Yeah, not like not like, there can only be one martial artist. Not like you know, not like not like <laughs> dude, just like when Spock had to fight Kirk. You know, not like that. But like just for like <laughs> I just rewatched that. It's still really good. That movie is fucking phenomenal. Speaking of unhinged, that's a great idea. <laughs> right. Um but yeah, okay, but yeah. That was just that's a little no, shower thought. <coughs> Um, I yeah, know I was actually, I was like, it, it, it was interesting to, to find that we just accidentally had the same fight choreographer with two movies in a row. I yeah. Mean, I mean, I remember my, uh, movement teacher in school, he was a fight choreographer for a lot of stuff and he probably actually knew you and we Wu Ping, uh, because it's like, once you like get no, like you, once you get into that job, that career, there's not a lot of people that are really, really good at it. So then, like, if you're the top of your game, and you're really just coming on, you're not in, there for the filming of the entire movie. It's, no. like, only, like, like segments, you know? Well, is it also, like, in that world, too? Is it, like... Sorry, I just said, like, a lot. Um, it, You specialize in... Because you know there will be like a like a sword fight coordinator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and there will even in that within the sword fight, there'll also be particular types of styles of sword mm-hmm, fighting. Mm-hmm. Whether it be like you're fighting with claymores or yes, yes. you know, what the what the, what the what the what's the wispy one? The rapier. The rapier. Like what you do for a something. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I really wish I would have taken fight choreography. I still want to take fencing lessons. I think that'd just be fun. Just to poke people. Yeah, it's expensive. Touche. <laughs> Yeah, it's a rich man sport. Yeah. You're missing a word in that. Um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> if you got it, you got it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, let's go into starring. Because it's actually got a pretty good cast. And also, Small. Com- completely forgot Morgan Freeman. I utterly forgot that. I was, I was like, like, oh, wait, that's right. There's an entire other story to this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we just literally were so zeroed and focused in on the fact that it's uh Jet Li as just like a, a prisoner a, a pretty train, much a train killer dog kind of, type yeah. yeah and then all of a sudden it's like Morgan Freeman showed up I'm like Morgan Freeman I was oh, like yeah there's some heart in this and like no he showed up and I was like is that Morgan fucking Freeman and then I was like oh my god yeah there's an actual story to this movie <laughs> so as we said multiple times uh Jet Li yes. plays Danny uh Danny the dog um how many Jet Li movies have you actually seen? Not a lot. He also has been in like 54. A lot of them. I mean, a lot of them are Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. So there is one. I have this. And I was actually trying to go through the list. It's a black mask. No, I do want to watch that. This at yeah. the superhero. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 cool. yeah. <laughs> I was like, we should add that to the list. That looks like, <clears throat> no, there's this one. I think it's, I have this real like memory of being young and watching a movie where it's young him like fighting his brother, but it's like. It's it's not it's not a modern day movie. Like, is it is it a Chinese movie? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I remember really liking it, but I remember interesting. Him, I think it's him again. This is like such a fuzzy memory. I was yeah. really little, but I remember wearing like a blue robe, 
and like having an argument with his brother. And I don't know if it was him, but I was really going through the list trying to figure it out. But that was hard because <laughs> they're all Chinese movies. So I was still trying to figure it out, but not a lot to answer your question. Sorry. Like the one I've seen the most is probably the one mm-hmm. fearless. <clears throat> I want to watch war. I haven't seen fearless. Um, I actually, so uh, first one I watched uh, probably was actually lethal weapon four. Oh, I always forget who was in that. Yeah, he's that was actually that was his first um, American movie. Hmm. Um, and I think he only says like four or five lines in it, but he's kind of like the main antagonist in it. Well, it's like his family is like the main antagonist of it because it's all about like Chinese immigration and slaves mm-hmm. and stuff. Okay. <clears throat> and like his family is like the the Chinese mafia that's like uh, importing people as goods, pretty much to use them for slavery for counterfeit money. Human trafficking. Yeah, human <laughs> trafficking. Um, and yeah, there's, uh, yeah, him and, uh, yeah, it, it, it ends with a fight scene with Jet Li versus Mel Gibson and uh, and uh, Donald Glover. Danny Glover, sorry. Danny Glover. Danny Glover. Um, but yeah, I also, I remember the one, I have seen either Romeo Must Die or Cradle to the Grave. I don't know which one because both of them have Jet Li and DMX in it. And that's all I remember about the movie is seeing Jet Li and DMX in a movie together, <laughs> which it blows the, just the fact that DMX. That's an interesting statement. Has an acting career <laughs> and that he had multiple movies with Jet Li. Um, and they fought in one of them. I remember as well. Yeah. I mean, I've seen like hero. I have seen the forbidden kingdom. I don't remember that. Yeah. He plays a monkey King. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. The Mummy, which I just watched, and that's oh a, the third one. That is hot pile of garbage. That is woof. That, that is, is rough. It's like that's a really rough movie. That is, you know, we talk about Universal ride through and through. Yeah. That is all that is. That is literally just a Universal ride that doesn't move. Mm-hmm. There's nothing else to that movie. <laughs> um, and then in Mulan, which the the remake, which I which never, I have not seen yet. I watched it and immediately <clears throat> forgot about it. That's fair. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, it the, just didn't. Not really good reviews. I've also heard about it as well. Yeah, it just didn't really stick. A lot of those remakes really didn't, though. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. I don't remember Dumbo. I forgot that happened. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's usually the response people have. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> you know which one I always forget? Beauty mm-hmm. and the Beast. Also, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, Lion King, because it's shot for shot, pretty much. Oh, no, don't yell at me about no, it. No, it's almost a shot for okay. shot. Okay. Like, as soon as I know, said it. It's really strangely, like, like weirdly almost shot for shot for, like, a lot of the scenes. It's very weird, which was also kind of like, well, it's just, well, just why? Yeah, John well, Favreau, why? No, it's weird. Though, now I'm thinking about it, because remember the, I don't know if they still do it, but remember the vault? Disney, uh, Disney vault every yeah. Sunday night? Well, no, no, ABC? they. Well, no, they. They would every couple. Oh, no, that was Magical Kingdom. Sorry. Like every ten years or something, they would re-release oh, an old the, one from the, the vault, to yeah. remastered and everything. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. So just go back to that. Just go back to. Yeah, but you can stream everything now. That was to That's make money. Off oh of the yeah, VHSs. like off a bunch of basically dead stock that was just sitting yeah. there. So now they're making money on their dead stock by remaking it. <laughs> by remaking it. Disney, fuck you. Moving on. <laughs> Morgan Freeman. Happiest place on earth. <laughs> Morgan Freeman's in this movie as well. Um, he plays a blind man. If you don't know who Morgan Freeman is. <laughs> he plays a blind man. He's <laughs> a piano tuner. Also, she's like, it's just that's... Uh, I'm a piano tuner, but I'm blind. I just do it all by ear. <laughs> God, I hate the characters in this movie, actually. Uh, Morgan Freeman is, and now you see me. Uh, two. Yes! Oh, God damn it! Um, the Dark Knight franchise. Oh, so Christian God. Bale's he plays Lucius Fox. He's God and Bruce, Bruce Almighty. Almighty. He is in Seven with Brad Pitt, and that he's fantastic in that fucking movie. Uh, he's in Bucket List, which is really I haven't seen that. That's good. That's John. That's uh, John, Jack John Nicholson. Nicholson. Yeah, yeah Jack Nicholson. Uh, Morgan Freeman. He's, I think he's pretty iconic. If you don't know who Morgan Freeman is, I, you're, you're living under a rock, man. Um, Bob Hoskins, though. Did you also need subtitles to understand what the fuck he was saying in this? Mm-mm. Mm, I did. I, had a really I didn't know that he's British. Hmm. I was like halfway through the movie. I'm like, man, he's doing this accent really good, man. <laughs> and I looked it up. and He's like, Bob Hoskins, British actor. I'm like, huh. 
Oh, okay. Okay. What? Right here, described by director John McKenzie as an actor from the British tradition, yeah. but with an almost American approach. I uh, maybe yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, because I mean, everything that I've seen him in, though, like Super Mario Brothers, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, it, like it's, it's like, yeah, it's just, I just, I just didn't know. I didn't know he was the goose in Balto. And then once I read that, I was like, oh yeah, that totally makes sense. I don't really remember that very well uh, enough to make that connection. I know. <laughs> we just got to do it. Enemy at the Gates came up again because it always does. How? When? When has this ever come up? When Bauhaus comes up, when Jula comes up, when Rachel Weiss came up. No. Yeah. Wait, who's in the mummy? Yes. Rachel Weiss. Yeah. Yeah. And a lobster. Yeah. So I, any these people keep coming up because I want to watch this movie. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna and watch I it. And I just keep forgetting. Um because also I've never seen Enemy at the Gate, so it's just like not it's also, yeah, anywho. Um Bob Hoskins, ba 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 ba. And then He's actually a great villain in this. He was awesome. Yeah. Um, He's like just spitting and snarling. Yeah, and yeah. He was really good. Uh, Carrie Condon, um, which we did, uh, we did her with um, Banshees of Any Children, mm-hmm. and she's the voice of Friday. Oh yeah, in the, in the Mar- Marvel, yeah, MCU. Mm-hmm. Um, and then was a recurring character, Better Call Saul. I never saw Better Call. I haven't, Saul. I haven't watched Better Call Saul yet, which I need to get around to. Isn't that like connected to Breaking Bad or it's something? It's the prequel to it, more or less, <laughs> because Saul plays uh, Walter's lawyer. In Breaking Bad, uh-huh. and he was such an interesting character. Actually, like not very much screen time, but like it was enough for that, like for to me, yeah, yeah to continue on. But like he's like it starts. I want to say in the first season, like hmm. he's a reoccurring character throughout all of uh, Breaking Bad. Like every season, he's like there is like yeah. And what's the actor's name from Better Call Saul? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Agent. Isn't he in MCU too? Was that him? Agent Coulson or whatever? No, it's not Agent Coulson. Oh. No, it's uh, the guy from uh, Nobody, Mr. Nobody. Or... I the thought was... Jared Leto movie? No, not, not the Jared Leto one. The one where... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bob O'Denderk. O'Den- yeah, O'Denker. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I forgot. Go. Yeah, I think it, that's just called Nobody. Jesus, fuck. That was... Uh, the okay. one where he's the, the punched in the face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I forgot about that movie. That movie, the John Wick with fists. Yeah, he's Saul. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, that was a cool movie. I forgot about that movie. Okay. We've uh, we've we've done a lot of just talking about other people, not just this movie. So let's get into the reviews. What if I don't want to? Okay. Okay, do your later guys. Have a good night. Do your thing. <laughs> uh IMDB has got a seven this movie's got a seven point oh. Um Rotten Tomatoes, it was a sixty six tomato and a seventy five audience. So I don't know. It's, it, that also, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just missing something. But I mean, it's also not super high for this for this movie, too. You know. Well, for the critic score distribution, distribution uh, positive of eighteen, mixed of eleven, and two negative. Mm-hmm. Uh, positive. Who did I pick? Gregory. Uh, Ninety-one out of a hundred. Uh, Gregory Chrisling at Entertainment. Um, Bounding out of the gate like a greyhound, Unleash needs only its first thirty seconds or so to elevate itself well above the average ag- average action pot boiler. Okay, sure. Lisa. If that's how you feel. Where's Lisa? <laughs> okay, uh, 60 out of 100 for the mixed. Uh, Lisa um, Nellison at Variety. Uh, slick transitions and punchy pace leave just enough time for Hopkins and Freeman to make dopey dialogue sound far smarter than it is. And as both Pitbull and Puppy Dog, Jet Lee convinces. And then... <laughs> I like the negative one a lot. Uh... 10 out of 100, Benjamin Strong at voice, cloyingly Drek. Glowing? Clone? Clo- clo- cloyingly Drek. Cloyingly. What does that word mean? So, uh, cloyingly is excessively sweet, rich, or sentimental, especially at to a disgusting or sickening degree. And then Drek is rubbish, trash. It is sickening, trash. I even looked at it, I was like, it is cute, but sickening, trash. Or it's, it says excessively sweet, rich, or sentimental. So Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, I was like, huh, two-word review. I'm going to look up those words because I don't know what they mean. <laughs> so yes, glowingly, excessively sweet, rich, or sentimental, uh, Drek, rubbish, It's kind of like trash. a, look how smart I am. <laughs> I can do it in two words. 
Um, Smug fuck. It's uh, kind of a pretentious review for a pretentious movie. Yeah. <laughs> I like it, though. I'm like, ooh, two new words. So, hey, if you hate our podcast, Lee, you learn two new words. Look at that. <laughs> Can't say we never taught you something. Uh, well, I'm just going to be like, we're all learning those fucking words, you idiots. <laughs> I've, ne- I've never, I've never heard, heard those words yeah. ever in my life. Um, um, so yeah, uh, I, the thing about this movie for me is that every character just seems like a stock, like cliche idea of something. And they were just thrown together into like, it, it's yeah, into a, into a story that that's the then just like how do these characters then become the story? Type well, this thing. this is I was that was weird about it, even like with watching this. It was it reminded me a lot of Shoot 'Em Up, mm-hmm. especially with like the eat the carrot kind of thing. But in the writing, there is just so many kind of like jarring, weird gaps in things. Like even like okay, so Danny and Victoria, Veronica, Victoria. I think it's Veronica. Victoria. Victor- fuck me. Um. <laughs> Victoria and Danny like start this like relationship, but then it kind of shows that like she's supposed to be in high school, but then he's she's, how old is he? And she I'm like, sorry, yeah. sis, but no. You're... And also and then also like blind man over here is just like, okay, he you're they're they're just gonna boo doop a doo and I'm not gonna I don't like, care. I brought home homeless man with weird past and he just with very violent tendencies. Like what is happening? Y- yeah, it's like there's just the This like it's like this like bleeding heart character that Morgan Freeman plays. It's like is just so not believable. Not a real person. Not a real person at all. But Morgan Fre- it's Morgan Freeman, so you're just like, okay. Because Morgan Freeman, yeah, I mean, he, he can read me a bedtime. I'm 31. He can read me a bedtime story. <laughs> like, <laughs> please do it, Mr. Freeman. But like, but that's the hundred. Yeah, but that's what it is. It, uh, here, here's the way of putting it. This whole movie feels like a CD skipping. That's an interesting way to put like it. Like a lyric, and then and then another lyric. And, uh, 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 like but choppy. it's but it's coherent still. Yeah, no, but that's uh, that's that's fine because it's like you can still listen to a song skipping. Can you? I don't like I can't. But you get, it's, it's the metaphor. What I'm saying though is just that, like that alone, where it's like this weird, weird romance thing, which you see in a lot of action movies. That's that's the time of the the era and everything. It's always weird. It's always kind of yeah. weird if you really like read. Also, they're kind of actually looking back at Luke Besson and like his just like writing of females and like relationships. All kind of very short sighted and like bleh. They're actually not very interesting. Like Lilu and Well Lilu's Corbin. cool. Well, Lilu's cool though because she is a badass and she fucks Lilu's her up. cool, but the relationship with her and Corbin is weird. Is weird. But then it also gets weirder when you dive into it and you look at the age difference between the two. Yeah. And then Transporter, also very just it's like a savior weird co- uh, hero savior yeah, complex. Savior thing. complex. It's like um, oh, well, we can go into like the weird Leon the professional where that it's not supposed to be, but it's in it's weird inferred maybe. I've heard Natalie like, Portman is fourteen years old. I've heard this problem. It's problematic. Yeah, because I have never seen it, so I don't have a yeah, reference it, point. I've only I haven't seen it all the way through. I've seen just like like in because like Natalie Portman fourteen years old is playing at someone much her her, 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 her the way that she pre- presents it is like she's an adult. It's very... Natalie Portman's just a wonderful actress. And she always has been. It's the end of that statement. <laughs> v for Vendetta. Yeah. She was great in that. <laughs> there was a... Uh, uh, this is a little side tangent, but a joke that we would have at Cornish with some of the uh, like some of the girls that I did scenes with, they fucking hated Natalie Portman. I was like, why? She's a wonderful actress. Like, all she does is cry. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, name a movie she doesn't cry in. And I was like... Uh, huh. Like yeah, it's just all she can. She just like Attack of the Clones. I think that's what I said, and they were like, she cries in Star Wars. Yeah, well, she cries like, in the third one. She re- d- cries in Revenge of the Sith. She doesn't cry in Attack of the Clones. I don't remember her crying in Attack of the Clones. Does she cry in Phantom Menace? No. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what would have happened. Yeah, exactly. In those two. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cried in V for Vendetta. Yeah, she did. Like getting her hair buzzed. Yeah, I'm yeah. like she's being tortured. So, yeah. you know, like... <laughs> Fair. Well, yeah, anywho. Um, yeah, no, it's like... What was the other thing? Uh, in this, in... The skipping CD thing. Oh, yeah. Or, like, 
just and it's fine again we are a big for moments so just eat the carrot just go with it like you're just watching it for the experience um so he was taken real little yeah how did that continue on what do you mean how did they never explain like who was helping bart hopkins bart continue on with this like he's a loan shark. He's not, you know what I mean? He's not oh, like what type, like the gangster that he is. Like where did this condi- number one, where did the conditioning come from? Yeah. And two, where did the, the fight, like the fight, it's like, yeah, okay, fine. The kid maybe took lessons when he was, until he was eight or when, yeah. however old he was, but you need to continue that. The, and the, the whole idea is that it's, it's a, it's a, well, it's inside of him. It's, it's just what he had. It's his inner. No, that's the idea. I know, but I'm like, this- then eat the fucking carrot, dude. <laughs> This isn't, this isn't Mike Myers, you know what I mean? Like, this isn't just, like, this is some trained professional fighting. Yeah. Well, then, um, my partner pointed out something interesting, and I was like, oh, that kind of been, might have been something written in, but there's that guy in the white that he fights. Dude, oh my fucking God. Like, where the fuck, who, why, when, huh? But, no, who fa- is this fucking Aang-looking Matthew Littered motherfucker out of goddamn nowhere? Fallon was like, oh, what if that was supposed to be, like, they, like, written in to be, like, the trainer, and he's, like, coming in to put the dog down. And I was like, no, that doesn't make zero sense. What else makes sense? But hey, I think it was a good point. I was like, no, that could have honestly, we've seen it multiple times where there's some random thing. There's like, you saw him one other time. I know. What if they wrote out for screen for timing wise, something crucial, just a fucking thing, a dialogue to be like, oh yeah, (laughs) time for you to put the dog you trained down or yeah. something you know what i mean like something and it was like it kind of does feel like one of those like producers sitting in the studio going they're not going to notice cut it there it is matter. something weird about that character that yeah the, that character 100 percent they sticks out they lost they didn't yeah they they, they lost they either, something. they either took something out or they never put something in there yeah it's one of those yeah. And, and from all the like uh, reviews that we've done, this we're on uh, episode 151. Yeah, there are so many things that we've seen where we're like, yeah, uh, yes, this especially up, if we're in yeah. problematic studios, problematic yeah. producers. It's like that moment. But what's sticks really out. weird about it is that Luke Besson, he's the producer. Like, it, he has seem he seems to be a type of producer that has more creative control over his projects than anybody else. Well, yeah, but it's still a studio. Like, who was the studio? Companies Europa Core, and then uh, then Danny the Dog Ltd, which I looked up, and this is the only movie under that. So Europe, uh, it was Europa Corp. Yeah, Europa Corp, which I don't have any kind of French motion picture company headquarters in Saint Denis, a northern suburb of Paris, one of the full few services. So, yeah, it's oh, but Luke Benson's a chairman. Yeah. Hmm. So like, it's like that's why also like honestly for this movie. Every single person involved in this movie just has something that's better. Like, this movie is just the Like, Luke Besson. Fucking Transporter, I think, is actually a little bit more interesting than this movie. Um, Fifth Element, obviously. Leon the Professional, La Femme Nikita. His earlier career was so much more creative, and it feel it felt fresh. This just now, we're just now, now this is just kind of like, oh, this is Luke Besson. Well, I, I think that this movie is uh, just on, even just on paper, is way more interesting than Transporter. I... Or transporter, transporters, or whatever. Well, no, it? I think I actually wrote that down. Actually, it's just like this. Yeah, um, yeah. It's like it, yeah. This movie is like it's like when you describe the premise and you look at it on paper and like the idea of it, you're like, this sounds really cool, and then it just kind of just blah. It just just. Well, like, like the, one of the best Sunday afternoon action flicks since the glory days of Schwarzenegger. The most enjoyable film Benson has done, has a, has a, had his name on in eons. There's a lot of these, like, for what it is, kind of. But that's the thing, though. I, bec- it's so okay. Number one, let's talk about the choreography. The fighting is fighting is great, and intense, Jet, and Jet Li is fucking a wonderful martial artist. Like, he actually, he's one of the reasons why the wuxia like genre. Yeah, I saw that fly go right towards yeah. your eye. <laughs> like, no. He's one of the reasons why the wuxia genre started to become popular again in China because he, I mean, he's also a fucking uh, uh, like actual like martial artist champion in um, what was it? Let me get him up. Well, what I was um, wushu. He's a wushu champion, and like for like he. He is the reason why a lot of like martial arts movies became popular. Him and Jackie Chan, and also fucking Yuan Wu Ping, like 
Yuan Wu Ping, he's like he's done a he did also um like Donnie Yen in Iron Monkey. Um Michelle Yeoh and Wing Chun. Iron Monkey, I forgot about that yeah. movie. Like God, I've seen a lot of really random martial arts movies. I don't know if that would be considered random. I don't know. But Iron Monkey. I mean, that's pretty. That's it's a really popular one. Is it? That, I mean, that became, that was one of a, one of the few that became like worldwide, like internationally, international. Like, I remember being goofy. It's a little goofy. Like the humor in it. No, yeah. but what I was what I was getting to is that it, Jet Li in this, his fighting is brutal. Yeah, and it's a cr- and even when the beatings he's taking, but just like not letting it, like you know, psychologically he can block out like his pain receptors. Mm-hmm. Um. But then it's like, then it just, it, it's, I think that's again, the CD skipping, it's this like kind of stressed, this really big contrast because there's like this crazy fight scene and then you start getting into the, like the emotional part of it of like the trauma that he's been dealing with and then mm-hmm. coming out of it. And you start, you start getting into that groove of like, oh, we're getting, we're healing, we're, we're fixing this. And then suddenly there's this insane violent yeah. fight and then we go back into the and it's just such a jarring transition that it makes it feel like really choppy. But I personally liked that kind of like heart that they were trying to put of like getting him out of yeah, no, I mean that's, this this <clears throat> pattern, you yeah. know, this cycle that he's in. But it was just the way they transitioned. But I do feel like he tr- started to trust that family way too quick. Well, it's the only people that's ever been nice to him. <laughs> also, every time they like touch the car, he's like, oh. <laughs> he's trained up. I know, I know. For I know. keep the, no one that's seen it. Uh, he he has a, he has a collar. When he wears the collar, he's totally docile, sweet, and like calm. But then when his master Bart takes it off and says "kill him," he becomes a bloodthirsty monster and yeah. destroys people. He was he's conditioned. Yeah, Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, kept in a cage in the floor. Yeah, that, that, that unlocked the entire time, and he did. It. That was cool. And he just opened it. And just well, that's not it. cool. Maybe that wasn't the right word for that. You're saying that it's cool that he was just like that. He uh, like, it was an interesting attention it. to detail too yeah. of like he's been so conditioned he didn't even think once to try and open the gate. Yeah, they just left the gate open. Yeah, which I thought was really interesting. And um, but yeah, Bob uh, Bob had a really hard time understanding when he was yelling. If he was just talking, it was fine. Maybe since I always just watch something with subtitles, I didn't really catch it. Oh yeah, I, I think we caught it too because the subtitles were off. Mm. And as the beginning scene, and he's at his desk screaming, we're like. The fuck did he just say? <laughs> also, it's like he just like Bart, like Bob Hoskins' character Bart. It's like he just gets more evil and like gross as like the film goes on. And it's just I, I at a certain point, I'm just like we get it. He well, is a the, horrible the, piece of shit. He's been conditioning this human. Like, well, it's because he's losing control, and yeah. so he's losing control of himself. Yeah, because he's yeah. used to this this thing in his yeah. eyes, you know. I mean, that's like the whole point of that is he's he's spiraling because he's losing control of his pet. Yeah, which, but that was even, but that's what I was saying. I like that moment too when he finally like snaps and he straight up starts talking to, because, you know, he talks to Danny like kind of like a child. Yeah. And then we'll like yell at him and scold him. But towards the end, he's like straight up talking to him like a, like a dog being abused. And yeah. you're like, Ooh. yeah, this movie. Then he didn't, spoiler alert, he didn't kill him. I know that was like the arc, but. Oh, that's right. He doesn't kill him. To show that he's not the animal. And then they're in San Francisco, or was it New York? Where did they go for her? Yeah. Carnegie Hall was New York. Yeah, I went back to New York. And this song is for my friend. That was sweet. I <laughs> you're a heartless bastard. <laughs> I teared up. Don't worry about it. You did? <laughs> yeah. I was like, it was sweet. That's what I was saying. There's, but that's what like, that, that was just jarring to me. And it was like kind of cool, only in the sense that because you're like, oh, look, they're healing by tuning the piano and learning to play again and then suddenly and heads going through walls and then you're like holy shit I mean it's I mean yeah but like it's shocking it's suddenness is because it's like he's suddenly taken from the family Mm -hmm. you know and yeah it's just and it's all by a happenstance of just bumping into the wrong person on the street I did think the whole was like making why like why they make her like a I mean she had to be she was a high school student right she was going to like a Catholic high school she was wearing little pleated skirts and shit she got yeah she had braces like now, I was sitting there wondering, I was like, I mean, if she, it's like, even if she's supposed to be 19, is then Jet Li supposed to be like 19? So I'm like, sorry, bud, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> no, but I think he is supposed to be like younger, like closer to her like in age. in 20s or something? Early 20s, because if you think about like how, when he was taken by Bart, 
And when the when his mother, all that whole thing with his mother happened when she was killed by him because uh-huh. he's a piece of shit at yeah. If you weren't if you weren't sure of a piece of shit he was, uh, don't worry, he kills the mom to really solidify it. Yeah, because she won't have sex with him. <sighs> God damn it. Um uh where was my brain? Oh yeah. Uh they go to the school that she was at and they're like, Oh yeah, she just disappeared. They thought it was money issues. And it's like this older woman is like, so this is probably within like a, if like a decade to maybe a decade and a half. Uh, we could have paid attention on the book she grabbed that said what year it was, and I don't remember. Oh yeah, they were all in order. Yeah, I don't think they actually. Yeah, I I don't, I don't oh, yeah, but yeah, I I think it's supposed to like if he was taken when he was a young boy, let's say six. Twenty years, he's twenty six. I don't think it's been two decades. I think it's been a decade to maybe a decade and a half. All right, so it's been 15, 15 years. years. He would be like 20, 21. Yeah. But Jet Li is definitely not 20 <laughs> years old in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and you could really go into some weird racist shit with Luke Besson and being like, he's an Asian guy. Don't they all just look young? Oh, I was like, where are you going with this? <laughs> what are you about to say? Don't Asian people just look look young all the time? <laughs> Oh, you're not going to say it? Okay. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I would have said, I would have, yeah. You yeah. would have said it if you didn't say your name. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. It was one or the other in the first, yeah. You know, I think also like a big thing, like I was kind of noticing through this movie is like Jet Li is a, he is a great uh, martial artist and he is wonderful for th- or, like, martial arts movies, obviously. Um, but just like the style of movies that he does, but them being a little bit more kind of dramatic I I've I noticed that I just like my martial arts movies to be a little bit more lighthearted, fun, goofy, more clown esque, like Jackie Chan, mm-hmm. Kung Fu Hustle very much as well. So like there was kind of watching this, I was like, hmm. like I I appreciate this is good, but it's just like it's not the not my jam for a martial arts movie, you know? Yeah. Where are we at? Uh, Forty seven. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I just, I don't, it's interesting for those, like, reviews to be like, Luke Besson is finally, blah, blah, but it's like, I mean, yeah, maybe yeah, he's going back to, I think the thing that it was, he, he went back to a formula that he had already mastered, and it's just kind of like, blah, whatever, dude, just be, keep growing as an artist. Fifth Element was great because it was so different from everything else that he had done. Also, the goddamn, the underground fight scene is so over the top ridiculous, like, Weapons! Just like that dude is just like a caricature of a goddamn underground, uh, 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 like, um, fighting ring, whatever. And everyone just like the guy with a spiked fucking mohawk and fucking dumb shit and just ugh. It was a great choreographed fight scene, but it was just dumb with like the characters. Yeah, they're in that like saw pit. Did you notice that like there was like one of the people like grabbed one of the, like one of the axes or whatever the fuck the weapons were to throw it in was like this older woman and her hair was all fucking like Goku spiked out. No. And I was like, what the fuck is this eccentric weird shit? Rich people. Yeah. Also, oh, that's the. I think there's just a, this weird level sense of like unsure of an identity of this movie. Because it, there is parts of it that are weirdly over the top that feel like a Luke Besson, like Fifth Element over the top type thing. Like that whole, that whole sequence, underground fight scene sequence. And this like reality of like what is the, what the real world is. And they don't, they don't mesh well. It doesn't seem flushed together. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what I was also saying with just the fight scenes in general and then this like healing arc that we're yeah. going through it does yeah this movie does feel i don't know it has this moments where it does it you're like okay this is a, its identity oh wait nope nope is this its identity yeah exactly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he heals through the power of love and music and tuning pianos and girl with braces well, that, that was, I thought that scene was really bizarre, too. That was, she, like, 
I get it that you're trying to make the story move along and everything, but her taking off the collar, I was like, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't touch the collar. Don't touch the collar. Don't, don't, don't. You've seen what happens when you take the collar off. She hasn't seen what happens when you take the collar off. She hadn't yet? No, she'd had no idea. Hmm. Well, it doesn't look like you want to <laughs> don't take it off. But she takes it off and it's all okay. She's all in her robe and she's like, let me take it off. And I'm like, this is getting weird. That was really. Which is, I just don't get that. I really am like, what? Just make her make make them all, make him twenty five and she's coming out of college, getting ready to go to. I don't know. There doesn't need to be a love situation no. in as well, Luke Besson. There really didn't. That's definitely one of those not necessary. Yeah, completely unnecessary. Oh yeah, that is interesting because even with the whole Morgan Freeman thing, dude, I, that's what I was best friends with. Her father, and then I married. He died, and then I married her mother because we were also best friends. And you're like, I mean, sure, this this has to happen, I guess, in the real world. Yeah, like that. Yeah, but what? I don't know. Weird because writing. He choice. is a kind man. He might be blind, but he is very kind, and he knows how to tune a piano. Is that what? It, I don't fucking know. It's dumb. <laughs> it was just weird. I was just like. It's like these characters, yeah, yeah, it's like, it's weird for me to say stock characters because they're really, it's like, I can't, it, 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 they feel cliched. It, it feels like too much. You know what I mean? I mean, if you were to take away, I guess if you were to take away the specifics of them. Okay, so you have Morgan Freeman, who is the wise old man. Yeah. Teaching life lessons, yeah. you know, but, and a lot of the time, you know, they'll get, you know, they'll give the wise old man a cane or something to like show that. The hardships they have gone through on their own. Yeah, so he's blind. So they make him blind. Um, but he can tune a damn piano, man. I mean, why is that so crazy? To you? It's not that it's, it's not crazy. It's just like... It is sound. Yeah, I know. But it, it's just this whole thing of like... It, it, I, what am I trying to say? <laughs> it's like, I know where it is in my mind. It's... it's you people out there understand me what I'm saying. I don't know, actually. And by you people, it means blind people. Uh, <laughs> is it because is it this added thing that you just feel that? Yeah. You know? It's like, yeah, he's already the... Would you feel the same way if it was actually a blind actor? No. Is it because they got Morgan Freeman? They're no, like, it, hey. it, no it's, it's just, it just feels extra. Yeah. It feels unnecessary. Feels unleashed. <laughs> feels un- feels unhinged. Um, my uh, word for this episode. Um, there, yeah. I mean, you're right. There is a lot of this movie where it's like, yeah, just eat the carrot, just kind of accept it for what it is. But at the end, it just I just I don't think this movie is all that good. I think it's okay. It's enjoyable. It's got great martial arts in it. I feel like Jet Li's acting is maybe one of the better parts in it all. Like how he plays that the very timidness. His like the it's like there's really wonderful moments of him like being very innocent and childlike, discovering a new world and discovering compassion from with other people. And like when he's on the boat and he's all like, Jesus fucking Christ, it's fucking hilarious and a really like wonderful, like just small moment of like Jet Li committing to this character. We well, also, he did a really great job of saying a lot without saying anything at yeah, all. Yeah. Like, you know? And like there's a lot of like inside of that like fighting sequence, and, like even though that fucking underground battle royale thing is oh, really we fucking weird. You see his struggle with what's happening, his inner turmoil of not wanting to kill these people, but still fighting them back. Like there is like he is like Jet Li does a really good job in this movie. And I, I that's one thing I will say. Well, it's even like with that whole over the top where he's fighting the big mm, yeah. meathead guy. Um that even Bob Hoskins, it's like he Bart's getting so aggravated because he knows that Danny could super easily yeah he's like why you like what is this show like what are we playing tag like like finish him you know Mm -hmm. he's even very aware that this guy should like well because you see it too in the very first fight yeah 30 what 15 seconds and the dude's down it's like it was like a second he hit him in the fucking no he just hit him in the throat but then it's like then this this yeah i mean then you see start seeing the arc of him like learning like oh i don't want to do this anymore, yeah. which he never felt like was an option. Mm-hmm. You know, there's enough of him. I mean, I liked it. I thought it was fun. 
fucking Aang looking motherfucker out of nowhere. Oh yeah, that that was. But I mean, that was also a great fight scene though. That yeah. became a really cool fight scene. I don't know why it made me think of that. Uh, there's something about the way it was shot made me think of that Born movie. Well, I don't remember which one it is. But he he fight he fights like the the other Born, the one that pulls his like the knife out. Of, I mean the pencil the pen out of his hand. Oh. That fight scene, there's something about the way it was shot. It made me think of that. I can see that. It's the close quarters. It was the close quarters, and I think it's the, you know, they're at the same, like, like level. It really yeah. is this one of them is going to win, one of them is not going to. Yeah. And I was like that with Bourne. One comes in, or two come in, one, one comes out. Um. What's he, what, what do you got? What? Carrot. Oh. What's your rating? I have I three. I'll accept it. I mean, I think it's a 2.5. I think three. And I think... I, uh, uh, yeah, three. Okay. I enjoyed it. I think it's good. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's amazing. Yeah. It's like... It sits in this little weird bubble of Jet Li's American cinema career. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, I guess French, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was also... I was like, I didn't realize how French... Th- well, it's like... Because I didn't know that this was Luke Besson. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't know that it was set in Glasgow. Like I thought they were in New York or something. Yeah, I was like, "This is in Scotland." What? <laughs> the fuck? What movie is? Th- I, did I watch this movie? Morgan Freeman did it. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't even realize it was in Glasgow. I didn't catch them say that at all. It was just like Europe. <laughs> yeah, pretty you know much. what I mean. It was yeah. like Europe somewhere in Europe. Yep, Europe. Looks like Europe. <laughs> sure looks like Europe. Sure looks like Europe. Hey, what's that over there? Looks like Europe looks, to me. Looks like Europe. Looks like not America. That's what it looks like. God uh, damn it. God damn it. Where are my cornfields at? <laughs> yeah. It's too many castles. <laughs> what is that? Cobblestone Street? Not on my land. Uh, not on my watch. <laughs> it's uneven, Barbara. <laughs> um. God damn it, Bobby. God, God damn it, Bobby. He's lost in the castle again, Bobby. <laughs> um, I don't know you. That's my purse. <laughs> All right, we gotta, we're, we're, we're spiraling. We're spiraling so hard right now. I don't know what we're doing next week. I can't remember. I can't either. Susie is there <laughs> talking to the castles. Castles everywhere. We long for a bungalow or something. Okay. <laughs> We all got a castle. You got a castle. I got a castle. We all have castles. Um, yeah, I don't remember what we're doing next week, but yeah, we'll follow our promos and yeah, you know, we'll figure. I mean, it's in our uh, yeah. I can look it up real quick. It's not. Yeah, oh god. <laughs> hey, kind of works out. <laughs> Warriors are virtue. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, no. uh, we're doing like that's a, right. We're doing our children's like, fever dream block. Yeah, and Warriors of Virtue is a, f- a fantasy movie, um, but in- with martial art fighting kangaroos in a fantasy world that a young man, a young oh. a young boy, must find the book and save the land. With, it's a young boy hero story with talking kangaroos. That yeah, fight with the ele- elements. The elements, <laughs> even though, and then one of them's metal for some weird fucking reason. Uh, that wasn't that Earth. No, there was already an Earth. Yeah, there's f- oh, there's five elements. It's Fire, wind, earth, fire, wait, water, water, thank you, and And metal. metal. Yeah. Like, what? Wouldn't that become a fucking element? Isn't that just earth and fire mixed together, pretty much? Sorry, Herc. Uh, We're already at five, and we want to keep it an even number. Um, Yeah. Imagine if some producer. Okay, we need to wrap. That's going to be next week's talk. Okay, okay. God damn it. (laughs) But yeah, so if you don't remember that movie, uh, check it out. Um, I don't know where you can stream it. We had to buy it. I have the, I got the DVD. <laughs> it's got the little book in it and everything. Damn. Um, all right. So yeah, this is Tommy. This is Jacob. This is Tommy, Tommy and Jacob's, Jacob's mixtape. Bye, everyone.